I'm Kevin Wilson, and my novel is called Perfect Little World. I'm obsessed with family, and I'm obsessed with the way that family functions. When you're a kid, you, you're born into this family that you didn't ask for, and you're trying to figure out how you fit into that family, right. and then before you know it, you're separating from them and making your own life. And, and now that I'm a parent, I see the weirdness of making this kid mm -hmm. and believing that you own them and then watching them separate from you and, and become a different person and, and how terrifying that can be. So for me, when I think about writing and I think about conflict, it's, it's those family dynamics that I usually gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. Do you try out different endings for your books or do you know when you start where everybody's gonna end up? I don't usually start the book until I know what the ending is. That, that gives me the confidence to think I'll waste three years of my life on this because I know how it's going to turn out and I feel like it's a decent ending. Yeah. And, and so the weird thing is when you think you know the ending and after three years you get to the end and you realize it has to change. It's not, it's not the ending. But with Perfect Little World, I really I thought this was what it will be and, and that changed quite a bit as I, as I moved through it. And really? It's scary, but it's also kind of wonderful when the book resists your, your intentions for it. It's like having a kid. They, they don't do exactly what you yeah. want them to. What makes for a satisfying ending? How do you know when you've landed on the right one? An ending that I love generally are, are endings that simply resolve. They don't wrap up everything. Usually, for me, a good ending is an ending that, it's strange to say, but an ending that ends right before where you think it should, um, so that it opens up those possibilities for, for what might happen. Right. Do you have other characters in your head who you haven't written yet that sort of dwell with you and are maybe waiting for their story to Yeah, be it's the character that comes before the plot. Uh, and so with Perfect Little World, for years, I had this idea of this young woman, and I knew her name was Izzy, and I knew that she was pregnant, and I just kept picturing her walking around this very small town. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I was like, why is she doing that? And I was like, well, she's walking around because she can't go home. I was like, why can't she go home? And I was like, because she doesn't have support. And it was about a good year and a year and a half of thinking about Izzy before I found out what the story was going to be. That is so interesting. It's like they're just marinating. Yeah. I don't have many friends, so I just live <laughs> with them in my head. I love imaginary friends. Yeah. Did you best. have imaginary friends when you were little? No, I didn't have a good enough imagination. I was pretty boring. <laughs> thank you so much for being here, Kevin. Oh, thanks for having me. And thank you for watching A Word on Words. I'm Mary Laura Philpot. Keep reading. You're good at this. Oh, good. It helps because I spend probably eight hours a day interviewing myself. And so, <laughs> Kevin, tell me about your process. Oh, what, a great, what a great question, Kevin. I would tune in to watch Kevin interviewing Kevin. Yeah. <laughs>